Hi everyone and welcome to our channel. For today's video, I will be helping you how to fill up your Schengen application form. So guys, um, the application form is one of the most important requirements when you apply for a Schengen visa. So it's like the face of the whole application process. So it's really important that uh, the application is filled up correctly. As in, wala dapat kayong ma-miss na number, all the information are correct, and of course, the only way to be able to make sure that the information will be correct is for you to understand what is being required for each number. So, I will run through the application form and I will be guiding you about what should be uh, and the answer or like what information should you be providing for each number. So let's go! Okay guys, for the Schengen application, um, it is for free and you can get it online. So I will be sharing in the description a link where you can download it. So let's go to the application form now. Alright, for the number 1 until number 9, uh, these are just basic information about yourself. So we have there the surname or family name, and then surname at birth, given name, birthday. Make sure yung date of birth nyo is arranged by day, month, and year. And then we have the place of birth, country of birth, current nationality, and nationality at birth if different. If ever you're dual, uh, if, if ever you are born in a different country and your nationality is different. And then number eight, it's either if you're male or female. Number nine, marital status. So these are very easy questions that you can fill up by yourself. So we go to number 10. For the number 10, this is only for those who are minor or let's say yung mga student applicant natin. Or if you are not a student, just leave um, NA. Or, and if you are a student, please do write your full name, address, and nationality of parents nyo or of guardian nyo. So we go to number 11. 11 is national identity number if applicable. So with me, I write NA. So kasi now, but now I'm seeing that uh, meron na kasi mga nilalabas na Philippine Identification Card. I haven't applied yet, but in the Philippines, we do have a national identity number or yung Filipino Pambansang Pagkakakilanlan. Uh, it's the official national identity card ng mga Pilipino. So you can, I think, na-approve na, na siya ni President Duterte, so you can apply that. And yung number dun sa uh, ID na yun will be yung ilalagay nyo sa number 11 na identity number. If you don't have that, it's it's fine. Leave it NA. So, for number 12, nagi scroll and mag solo. Okay, go. For number 12 to 16, this will be your passport details. Make sure, guys, that you have a passport already, ha. Hindi kayo makakapag-apply ng Schengen if wala pa rin kayong passport. So, for number 12, it's the type of travel documents or yung type ng passport na meron kayo. Uh, so, the passport that we have now you, you, is just like an ordinary passport. So, oh, you will have there the uh, travel documents or yung number nyo dun sa passport. Um, date of issue, validity ng passport nyo. Number 16 is where you apply for the passport. And then we go to number 17. The number 17 is your complete home address and email address, including your phone number. If you don't have a phone, a uh, cell phone number is fine. And then for the number 18 is the residence in a country other than the country of, car of current nationality. So, if you're living in another country beside the Philippines, please do indicate yes. And if you have a residence permit, because mostly if you're living in other country, they require you to have a residency permit, please do indicate the number and until when it will be valid. Pero if sa Pilipinas lang, 
I just check no. So for number 19 and number 20, this is information about your job, your current occupation. So nandiyan yan, employees, address, telephone number, complete information. However, if you are a family member of an EU uh, residence and you're applying for a family uh, visa, there's no need to fill up number 19 and 20. So pwede nyo na siyang i-leave as black as long as you're applying for a family visa. Sila lang yung mga pwedeng hindi mag-indicate uh, ng occupation. Sila lang. So, we go to number 21. For the number 21, it's the main purpose of the journey. Please do make sure that you're very clear of the purpose of your application for a Schengen visa. Kasi, Kung ano yung apply nyo na applicate na visa should match yung purpose ng journey. If you're applying for a tourist visa, you check tourism. If you're applying for a, if you're a student and only applying as a student visa, check study. So make sure it's correct. And then we go to number 22. So 22 to 25 are the information ng plan travel nyo. So for number 22, Member state of destination. So this will be your pinaka main destination nyo in the Schengen countries. This can be the country that you will stay the longest. So ito yung pinaka main country. Kung matat if you're planning to stay in a Schengen country for a month, which country are you going to stay the longest? For the number 23, it's the first entry member state. So, kung ano yung ticket nyo going to the Schengen country, if your ticket is, let's say, Germany, or in Germany, let's say, Berlin, so, your first entry for, will be Berlin. So, make sure that match with the plane ticket that you have. For number 24, so, for number 24, this will be the number of entries you are requesting. So, there is a single entry, two entries, and multiple entries. Single entries will allow you to enter the Schengen uh, state for just once. And after that, you need to apply for another visa if you wanted to go again. For the two entries, you have two entry that you can uh, go to a Schengen to any Schengen countries. And then after that, so the span yung between from the first trip to the second trip, it's up to you. But then, may indicated date kasi doon kung hanggang kailan lang valid yung Schengen nyo. So, for the multiple entry, it's like more than two entries in Schengen. For the, uh, they can give you a multiple entry that is good for 180 days. But the number of days that you can only be staying in the Schengen state is 90 days. Not more than 90 days, guys. Be mindful of that. So, it's up to you which how many entries you would like to apply. And then for the number 5 is the duration of intended stay dun sa Schengen country. So, how many days are you planning to be in the Schengen state? So, dito, uh, let's say 72 days, um, 80 days, 1 month. So, start ng counting is the day that you will be arriving in the Schengen state, not the don't include the day that you will be flying out of the Philippines. Huh? So, because let's say, there are um, connecting flights, so you will be arriving in Schengen like after two days. So, don't include the days na you travel kayo. Only include the day na tutungtung na kayo ng Schengen country. For number twenty six is the uh, Schengen visa issue during the past three years. So, guys, if ever nakapag-apply na kayo before sa ng Schengen visa, please do indicate that kung kailan, if you do remember. And if no, just check no. For number 27, this is uh, same dun sa number 26. If makuha na, na kayo ng biometrics, yung fingerprint when applying for a Schengen visa, again, if yes, please do not forget to indicate the date. If you don't remember the exact date, at least the month will do. 
So, for number 28 is the entry permit for the final country of destination, if applicable. So, what this means is that, um, let's say, after the trip nyo sa Schengen countries, you will be flying to Japan or any country that requires visa, India. So, you need a um, visa to that country, right? So, you need to include that as well. Just in case na dun yung final destination nyo after Schengen countries. And then, number 29 is the intended date of arrival in the Schengen area. Again, this will be the exact date that you will be arriving in the Schengen area. And then, the number 30 is the departure or yung pag-alis nyo mismo sa Schengen state. For number 31, this is the surname and first name of the inviting person in the member state. If not applicable, name and hotel or temporary accommodation in the member state. So guys, for the number 1 and 32, this is just information about the inviting person, family or even friends na nag invite sa inyo na pumunta ng Europe. So please do ask for the basic information, yung address nila. And guys, medyo magiging complicated siya if in a way that you have a friend a friend inviting you. Kasi hindi lang the same information nyo yung kailangan. You need to also submit a um, invitation letter as well. Like, I think meron siya parang invitation form na aapruba ng municipality nila. So, we can see that. You can check that online. So, if you don't have any friends or family member, please do write yung hotel. Yung uh, mga hotel accommodation nyo sa Europe. If you have five hotels, please do indicate that. If masyadong madami yung mga hotels na binook nyo, just write the first the first uh, hotel information, the phone number, uh, the, um, the address, and the rest. Just have a printout nyo booking information yo. So, for number 33. 33 is the cost of traveling and, and living during the applicant's stay is covered. So, dito na mag i yung information regarding how you will support your travel in the Schengen area. It's either you will support yourself or someone will support you or combine. Like for me, I'm going to support myself and then my husband will also support me. So I both check yung ano, um, by applicant himself and then by a sponsor. So I believe the more na they can see that you can really support yourself is a plus. So please do indicate what kind of support you have. If you have cash, credit card, prepaid accommodation. So it's all there. You just need to choose. So for number 34 is the... This will be, for 34 to 35, this will be the information of the family member. Your family member nyo na EU citizen. Okay, so I think information regarding either your grandpa, grandma, parents, husband, children, na nag invites or na, na, na EU citizen. Please include all the information, including their passport number, nationality, birthday. And number 35 is the, your relationship with the EU citizen. For number 36, place and date. So for the place and date, this is the date when you fill up the application form. It doesn't matter if the date is different from when are you going to send the application form. Okay lang na magkaiba. What the important uh, date is that when, when this application form was completely filled out. And then the signature, it's your signature. If you're a children, make sure that your guardian will sign this on number 37 or legal guardian. And then, yeah, that's it. That's basically it. Uh, on the third page, dun sa bottom, place and date again. That's the place and date that you're going to um, submit the form. Kung kailan nyo submit yung form, it can be handwritten. Just uh, have the date um, place and date. Your place is where the embassy is located, guys. Like Makati, Manila, Quezon City. Ayun, ganun. And then signature, again, another signature from you. So, yeah, that's it. 
So I hope that this video um, helped you uh, sa confusion or if you're having a hard time filling up your Shenyan application form because I did. <laughs> the first time I try, uh, I applied for a Shenyan visa, I got a bit confused with the application form because kung ano nempa kain hindi ko pila pila pila. But yeah, you should be very careful filling up the application form because it's the first page that you send to all the requirements. Nyo. So if ever there is uh, information that doesn't match the other requirements that you provided, I think you'll be having trouble with that. So yeah, uh, guys, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And please, if you're not yet a subscriber, we would appreciate if you will subscribe. So also guys, I will make a video regarding the steps and requirements on how to apply for a Schengen visa, as well as some of my tips for the application itself. So I will link that, the video, so you can watch it. And yeah, I'll see you on our next video. Bye!